waking up to a huge story this morning, the, passes, the passing of Justice Scalia, who is being remembered for his brilliant legal mind and fiery style on the bench. And ABC News chief anchor George Stephanopoulos is joining us on this big day. He'll also be anchoring a special edition of This Week later this morning right here on ABC. This is such big news, Dan. Justice Scalia is such a towering figure, the longest serving member of the court, one of its most powerful pens, a pillar of the conservative movement, and his death puts the Supreme Court right at the center of this election, sends the stakes through the roof. Court now divided right down the middle. Mm. If President Obama or the Democrats choose the replacement, it's a liberal court. If a Republican chooses the replacement, it's a conservative court. That affects just about every big issue. Stakes through the roof, as you said. And it affects really all three levels of government, a rare situation. George, it is great to have you here in studio. And as we look at the man and his three-decade legacy, you're looking at a live picture outside the Supreme Court where flags are flying at half-staff as they are in the rest of the country. Our team coverage begins with ABC senior national correspondent Jim Avila in Shafter, Texas. Hi, Jim. Good morning, Paula. Justice Scalia had at least two passions in life. He loved the law. So this weekend he came out to West Texas with the open spaces at a ranch resort owned by a Texas billionaire to shoot some quail. He never made it out on the range. This morning, the body of Supreme Court Justice Antonin Scalia arriving... Nino Scalia was a larger-than-life president on the bench. A brilliant legal mind with an energetic style, an incisive wit, and colorful opinions. Scalia was on a hunting trip at Cibolo Creek Ranch in West Texas. Scalia, an avid hunter, even persuading fellow Justice Elena Kagan to shoot skeet. Law enforcement sources saying he left dinner early and went to his room feeling ill. When he didn't arrive to breakfast Saturday morning, a person associated with the ranch went to check on him. He was found in his room unresponsive. The Catholic Diocese of El Paso administering his last rites at the ranch, a hearse then carrying his body towards El Paso. Condolences pouring in from former presidents, current candidates, and government officials. House Speaker Paul Ryan saying, I learned so much from this man. I knew him. I respected him. I looked up to him. We all did. At this point, no autopsy has been performed. In fact, a local justice of the peace performed, uh, pronounced the, the justice dead over the phone and then came out to the ranch to say that there was no foul play involved and turned the body over to federal marshals. The FBI is also investigating. George? Okay. This is the room where Supreme Court Justice Antonin Scalia died. His body was found Saturday in the luxury suite at a pricey hunting resort in rural Texas, 15 miles from the Mexican border. Today, we are learning more about Scalia's final hours. There are questions about the cause of death and the crucial hours following the discovery of his body. He had gone on a hunt. He had? Oh, oh yes. Oh, yeah, yes. Earlier. Had. Friday. Friday afternoon. The 79-year-old justice arrived Friday at the ranch with a friend on a private charter jet, landing on a private airstrip. They were guests of the wealthy resort owner, John Poindexter. Soon after, they went out to hunt. Scalia ate dinner Friday night where his mood was said to be animated and engaged. At around 9 p.m., Scalia said, it's been a long day and a long week. I want to get some sleep. He had a great time. In fact, when he turned in, he was uh, looking forward to the next day's uh, activities. Late Saturday morning, Scalia still hadn't emerged from his room and his host entered the suite. Poindexter was quoted by the local newspaper as finding Scalia with a pillow over his head. His bedclothes were unwrinkled. He was lying very restfully. It looked like he had not quite awakened from a nap. Scalia did not have a pulse and his body was cold. That quote about the pillow has triggered questions about the circumstances behind Scalia's death. Investigators say the justice died of natural causes and there were no signs of foul play. Scalia's wife of 45 years has asked that no autopsy be conducted. Scalia's doctor says the justice had gone to his office last Wednesday and Thursday because he wasn't feeling well and that he suffered from several chronic ailments. It was a very sober mood. We lost a, a great jurist and a great American. Scalia had humble beginnings. He was born in New Jersey and grew up in this house in the Elmhurst section of Queens.
mind your shot. Well, what we uh, are just looking at right now is uh, the casket of Supreme Court Justice Antonin Scalia resting in the Great Hall of the Supreme Court. Uh, you just saw uh, several men bring the casket up. Those men are Supreme Court police, and they're uh, serving as pallbearers, but also serving as honorary pallbearers, uh, the law clerks that served under him. And uh, you can see uh, some of the other Supreme Court justices uh, standing by as well. And with us, we have Bob Schieffer. I see you taking a closer look. Uh, I, I know you recognize the number of those faces mm -hmm. in there, Bob. Well, those are the justices. That's uh, Justice Ginsburg there. Um, and you can see as, as they go down the line, Justice uh, Clarence Thomas uh, right there. You know, we sometimes forget about the Supreme Court. We, we see so many pictures of the Capitol and of the White House, which, of course, are symbols of America. But the equal branch is also the judiciary. And, and the Supreme Court building is one of the most beautiful in Washington. It's, it's just behind the Capitol. And beyond this great hall is the, uh, the courtroom where the justices actually sit. And uh, it, it's uh, just magnificent. There's this huge uh, uh, red velvet curtain behind the, uh, where, they, where they sit. And it, there's a certain air of mystery about it because they don't allow us to televise, and so we don't see in there very much. But uh, it's uh, it, it's it's a very uh, beautiful sight, both outside and inside here. Let's listen in as they say a prayer. My brothers and sisters, Jesus says, "Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart." And you will find rest for yourselves, for my yoke is easy and my burden light. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord, Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my voice in supplication. If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But with you is found forgiveness, that you may be revered. I trust in the Lord. My soul trusts in his word. My soul waits for the Lord more than sentinels wait for the dawn. For with the Lord is kindness, and with him is plenteous redemption. And he will redeem Israel from all their iniquities. Let us pray for the coming of the kingdom, as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. God of faithfulness, in your wisdom you have called your servant Antonin out of this world. Release him from the bonds of sin and welcome him into your presence so that he may enjoy eternal light and peace and be raised up in glory with all your saints. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are those who have died in the Lord. Let them rest from their labors, for their good deeds go with them. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord. May he rest in peace. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. May the peace of God, which is beyond all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And we were just listening to Father Paul Scalia. He, of course, is the son of the late Justice Antonin Scalia, saying uh, a prayer over the casket that is now lying in repose at the Supreme Court. And he comes, he leaves behind an extremely large family. He and his wife, Maureen, had nine children and 28 grandchildren. That's quite remarkable. It's amazing. As we listen here, they're taking a moment of silence. We do know that the justices, former law clerks, they will take turns standing vigil by their former boss, throughout the day and night in a tradition, as we know most recently observed after the 2005 death of former Chief Justice William Rehnquist, there will be a a private ceremony with the family and Scalia's casket will then be um, on display on public view until 8 o'clock tonight. His son, of course, will also be giving the homily during the funeral. And I think it's particularly interesting that his casket is resting on the Lincoln catafalque, which is a, a wooden structure that President Abraham Lincoln's casket also rested on. It is an honor that only a handful of Supreme Court justices have received, Bob. I think that I, I think that's uh, I think that's right. Uh, and I, I was just thinking, watching his son there. I mean, this was what we used to call a good Catholic family: <laughs> nine kids and one priest. <laughs> and one priest. Mm-hmm. And you always know in a family that large, it's going to be one priest. Yeah. And, and then, what, 28 grandchildren. 28 grandchildren. Amazing. Absolutely. We are going to continue to watch this. Um, as we know, this is going to continue on throughout the day. We have a, a lot more to talk to Bob Schieffer about um, with other politics uh, throughout the day. So we are going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back on CBSN. <laughs> 